Yeah, g'day, Mark here, and welcome back to my channel. Now, sooner or later, everybody on YouTube makes tea nuts, but not everybody case hardens and grinds them. So stick around and see how they came out. You might remember in my video where I received my surface grinder from Malta, my mate Luke had sent a whole bunch of half-finished wheel hubs, which just need finished machining. So this would be an excellent opportunity to use my automatic chuck, which came with this box of soft jaws. Now this chuck is a lovely French automatic chuck. It's got a native D13 cam lock back on it, which is exactly what the Schaublin takes and has the right pull stud for the Schaublin. I did a video on this a while ago. I'll leave a link up here on the right somewhere. Unfortunately, when I took it all apart and cleaned it, I found that the drive pawls which move these chuck jaws are each cracked. It could well be a really bad idea to use it, but I paid 500 bucks for it and I want to get at least one use out of it. These wheel hubs are probably a hundred millimeter diameter. So I'm going to need to grip sort of out around the second hole of the bolt pattern here. So I'll try and find a set of jaws that are already close as possible to that. Right, so let's go through these soft jaws and find one set that's already roughly at the diameter that we need. They've all been used. None of them are fresh jaws. I think these are going to be the best option. Just turn them out a bit further. Now, unfortunately, although I've got the screws for them, I don't have any T-nuts to fit this chuck. So this has been on my list for ages. So I guess to make those nuts, I'm going to need some 15 millimeter by probably 12 millimeter stock, about 30 millimeters long. I don't really have much in the way of square stock. I did find this off cut of 15 by 15, but it's too short to get three nuts out of. So I guess I'll have to machine it down out of 20 by 20 bar. So I'll cut about four inches of it just to give me a bit of a kerf for the two cuts I'll then make. Since this is only mild steel and is going to need case hardening, I'll also make up a box. Bit much pressure there. I should have eased up as it broke through the wall of the tube. Yeah, it's probably a bit too coarse for this thin wall tube. Right, if I put this tube up at 45 degrees, I'll get a 1.44 increase in apparent wall thickness. Let's see if that's enough and I'll try and feed it nice and easily. I need to switch out for a finer blade. And I'll need lids for this case hardening box as well.
Now what we had here was the tool pulling itself out of the collet. Oh, I was going to take this out and tighten it up. That nut is definitely toast. Oh yeah, it goes all the way down. I wonder if this has got the same thread as normal ER collet nuts. Nope, doesn't feel like it. Right, so a normal ER32 collet nut has got a 1.5 pitch thread. Well, this looks like it's also a 1.5 millimeter pitch, the difference being the thread form. Instead of a normal 60 degree V, this is a square thread. This might be useful for something. Maybe I'll weld something onto it or I don't know, but it can go back in the drawer. covered drilling and tapping these parts actually breaking off a tap and then having to mill out the damage in a previous video so I'm going to leave a link up in the top right for that right I can now take those out flip them and machine the other side How's our blank looking? So I've got a nice fit across this thickness, but it's tight that way. That's fine. I did put a ding in there when I was doing the chamfers. Because this has put so much work into surviving, I think what I'll do next, I'll put it in the furnace with some case hardening powder and increase the carbon at the surface, but not harden it yet. First it just gets the carbon diffused into it. Yeah, we've got a real treat today. We've got my mate Luke here from Malta, who's visiting on his way to Chicago to visit Stefano, the designer and builder of the Dr. DRO. Welcome, Luke. Hi, welcome. What's this that came out of your suitcase? Uh, well, I couldn't come in behind it, could I? <laughs> <laughs> this is the obligatory dial indicator. Oh, wow. The millimass is a beautiful micron reading indicator. These ma millimass use a slightly different mechanism than sort of the more common round dial ones, and they tend to have less stick slip, which makes them much more sensitive and much more repeatable in their readings. That's going to be fantastic. Thanks, dial Luke. is just a bit small on them, so but maybe this is a bit better. You know, this kind of reminds me of those old gas pumps, you know, that tells yeah. you how much gas you've pumped into your car. That is enormous. I wonder what this was specifically originally made for. Just people with poor eyesight or... Probably my best guess would be some sort of comparator stand because you could quite easily split those divisions and could easily read half a micron on them. Yeah, yeah, maybe even quarter of a micron, yeah. Probably. Yeah. That is true. It has a very beautiful, smooth movement, huh? Thank you. That's beautiful. Now I just have to make up an adapter for it to sit on the stand. <laughs> so, Luke, I, I just need the... What's this? Heat treatment box. I need the ends glued onto it, but I really need to go and look after cooking some dinner. Do you mind just uh, ticking that up for me? Yeah, I'll have it a go. See how it turns out. <laughs> Thanks. No promises on <laughs> what it will turn out like, but uh, I guess... Well, if it sucks, we'll throw it in a furnace at 900 degrees. How's yeah. that? I think that turned out pretty okay. Cool. Well, if it's fantastic, then we'll throw it in the oven at 900 degrees. How's that? Yeah, and see how that turns out. Yeah.
But it sure does well nice. I can't complain, it's a bit of welder than I am. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm no expert in welding, but it's very smooth and runs quite good. Right, with that now cool, we can just put a bit of case hardening powder in the bottom. Then our first nut, more powder. More nut, and rinse and repeat. Blew a hole in it. Oh, of course, because um, we've got no vent hole. Yeah. I'll try and slowly bring that, close that up. <laughs> I think that'll be close enough. For carburizing, you're aiming for a temperature between 870 and about 920, I think is what the internet said. We're not up there yet, but I'll throw this in because it's going to take a bit of time to warm up. Eight hours later. Because this was only a test, we only gave it about an hour of carburizing and then shut off the oven and let it cool overnight. I screwed up the mic settings for this day, unfortunately, so it's just going to be voiceover. I was a little bit worried about cutting into my new T nuts, that's why I just cut in on all four sides of the top of this box and then did the rest of it with a cold chisel. Can case hardening powder be reused? So this is what the first nut looks like with the carburizing powder washed off. And then this is what it looks like after being hit with a wire wheel. This green gunk protects the metal from oxidation during the hardening. I don't know what it's made from. I got it off eBay Germany about 10 or 15 years ago. To harden them, I just heated them up with my furnace torch until a magnet no longer stuck. Then you're over the eutectic and I could dump it in the bucket. The first one, the wire burnt through, but luckily it fell in the bucket, and luckily it was hot enough. Again, this is what it looks like straight after hardening. And if we do a file test, the hardness wasn't that consistent. This end was a bit softer. The other end was definitely nice and hard. And then this is what it looks like once we hit it with a wire wheel again. After that, we tempered it back to about a straw color using the little torch. And then it was time to go over them and make them look pretty with the surface grinder. We really weren't that thrilled with the surface finish of the first wheel, even after dressing. So we switched over to a different one, just to see what difference it would make. This wheel did then take a fair bit more dressing to get it round, but it did leave a much nicer surface finish. Well, it looks like Luke and I got a little carried away with the grinding, such that we didn't notice that the microphones had gone flat. But this is what we came up with. Probably a little bit of overkill for T-nuts. Good exercise for me. I need to learn how to use the surface grinder better. As you can see, I haven't cleaned all surfaces up perfectly. And I didn't really bother too much with dimensions. Just sort of made them fit. If anyone's used one of these gamut chucks, how far out do you feel comfortable extending the jaws behind, beyond the chuck body?
What's up here with my pneumatic module? Is the valve broken? I haven't had this apart before, so does it unscrew or...? What says on it to clean it with uh, soap and water? And it's definitely a bit gungy around that ceiling surface. I'll give it a wash, but I got a feeling that the valve in the middle is not working properly. I would assume that whenever pressure's off, it's supposed to open and drip the water out that it's collected. And then as soon as pressure comes on it should close and it doesn't appear to be. There's also an internal thread here and there was nothing in there once it was leaking. So I wonder if it's the second half of the valve unit which is blown out and hiding on my floor somewhere. Nope, couldn't find it. So you can see the little valve in there and if I push down on the valve I can feel it. It's nicely sprung loaded. I wonder if the membrane behind it's blown out or something. I would have thought it would spring load in the open position when pressure comes off and then when pressure comes on it should somehow press down and close off but it's not doing it. Anyone got any experience with these? To me that thread would indicate that it's missing some bits. Right well that's a bit annoying. I was hoping to get that done and actually try out that chuck this week but instead it looks like I'm going to have to be ordering and replacing my filter unit, so that's a bit annoying. Big thanks to Luke for giving me some advice on surface grinding while he was here. Hope he has a good time in the States. So thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you next time.